Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch and great news, Blender 3.2 Beta is now here. Asterisk. Okay, well, technically, uh, if you're watching this on Monday, it is here tomorrow unless you build from source. So if you want to wait for the pre-compiled binaries, uh, you can grab them tomorrow. But if you want to check out Blender 3.2 today, build it from source, and you can see everything we are about to see today. Now, there are three major new features I'm going to highlight in this release, and uh, we're going to do them in order of sexiness. So I'm going to come in here. If you want to check these out, go into Edit and then Preferences. Go to Interface and make sure that Developer Extras is enabled. When it is, you'll see you have this new tab down at the bottom called experimental now the new things that we're going to be highlighting today are this one right here new curve types make sure that that is enabled and we'll talk about this one later on it is turned on by the way but you're not going to notice a huge difference so we'll get back to the ev next uh in a few minutes but first we're going to show you this new curve type now, this new curve type is quite cool so we've got our default cube we've got to sacrifice at least one per video so goodbye default cube and now we need to add a mesh that we're going to give some hair to so yes that is the new functionality we've got is hair so let's get a susan in here all right there you go hello susan let's add a little bit of uh add a little bit of depth to her so let's do a subdivide uh, subdivide subdivide all right there we go and we'll also do a smooth oops no, wrong smooth let's do the other smooth uh shade smooth all right there we go so here we've got susan and now we're going to give Susan some hair. So this is what we turned on with the new um, curves options. So now if you want to add hair to her, it's a pretty simple task. You just come up, add curves, empty hair. We could also have added random hair, but that makes sort of um, uh, just kind of pff, a ball of hair on screen. So now that we have done that, we come on over here uh, with the hair selected. So hair curves is selected up here. Go to the hair icon here and make sure that your surface is set right. So this is basically going to create hair curves on top of Susan. So how do we go about doing this? Well, pretty straightforward. Basically with hair curves selected, we go into sculpt mode and now we can start adding hair and we can then start styling and changing it. So add curves like so, and let's start giving Susan some hair here. So you can pick the, uh, the length of the hair right here. You can interpolate the length right there. Uh, we can set the radius of our, our drawing brush, for example, and let's just, let's give her some hair. All right, there we go. So, uh, definitely want to add more hair to one so let's do the add amount and there we go she has a lot of hair now she's very punk rock at this point in time and a little bit lopsided i suppose you could say but here you can see this new hair system in blender and yeah, we'll call that enough. So there we go. We've added hair in. Now, a lot of people aren't, you know, currently got their finger in a socket. So you probably don't want your hair just vertically standing on end. Well, that's where these other options go. So we can grow and shrink the curve so we can change the size of her hair. But what I want to do now is basically just comb the hair. So we could come in here and then we can just start grabbing the hair and we can, uh, we can comb it like so. And now we are while and out and styling her hair down. Now, this obviously can be a little time consuming based on the amount of hair you created, but this is a very easy workflow and you basically can just create her hair however you want it. Uh, it's uh, a cool new add-on if you are working with hair inside of Blender 3.2, instead of using particle systems now, uh, we have this option via curse. So let's swoop it in front of her. Uh, this all actually can be animated as well, which is very, very nice. We've also got tools here for a curved snake hook like that. And then we've also, again, you can grow and shrink the hair using this guy. Uh, so that is the new hair functionality in Blender. Very much a definitely cool new addition. I like it. So once again, adding this, do make sure you turn it on the new curve support in the experimental section. And then it's just simply a new object. So basically come on in here, add curves and then empty hair. As I said earlier on, so let's let's delete this hair that we just created. You do also have the option of curves, random hair, and it just sort of poof. Uh, and then in this case, what you're gonna wanna do is select the object for which that hair to be on. And you'll notice that this one actually has, for some reason, I don't know why this is, but the random hair gets a radius attribute out of the box, whereas the added curve does not get the radius. But if you wanna you know, make Sasquatch, you wanna do it really quickly, uh, you can do it using uh, the random curve, um, or the random hair object there as well. I think that one's a lot less useful, but definitely both are cool new features. Now, the next one we've got is a new uh, lighting system here. So now we can do light groups. Now this, unfortunately, and I don't know if this is going to change over time, but this is a cycles only feature. So if you want to go ahead and check it out. So you're going to see here, 
nothing. So I come over here, I switch out to cycles like so. Oh, oh by the way, while we're there, EV next is a separate option. So if you want to check out EV next, you're going to want to switch over there. Now you're going to see our options are a little min minimal. So EV next is kind of a, a 1.0 or 0 0.1 level of feature, by the way. So here we're going to switch over to cycles. I'm going to switch over to CPU com or GPU compute. And now that I have that in place, we come back over here. And what you're going to notice is now we have a setting here for light groups. Now, this is mostly set up for um, people doing renders. And what it allows you to do is to create multiple light setups. So I'm going to go ahead. We're going to get rid of this light in the scene. I'm going to do this as the, probably the most blatantly obvious, simple example I can. So what I'm going to do is come in here and I'm going to add a new light of type sun. All right. So do a GZ and let's move this guy right up here. And we will rename this guy to sun day. Oh, that was an unintended pun. All right, so there we go. Now we're going to do another one. And we're going to just basically come in here, light, sun. I suppose I could have just duplicated it. GZ, pull it up right there. And we will call this one sun night. Okay, so we've got the two different lights that we've got set up right here. Now we can create groups for them. You'll notice those are available in the view layer properties and then down here in light groups. We're going to create two new light groups. This first one, day. Second one, night, like so. And now we assign each of our lights into a particular group. To do so, with your uh, particular light that you want to assign selected, head on down here to the object properties of that object. Go on down to shading and you will now find a light group tab. So this first one we are going to assign to day. This one we are now going to assign to night. All right, there we go. So we have a daytime and a nighttime light set up. Nothing really too special going on here. Now let's change the way they work. So for the daytime sun, we'll come into the light properties of it and we will make it a very strong light. Let's switch over here to the EV renderer so we can actually see what's going on. So we got a very strong light on that one. And on this one, we are going to make a very weak light. So as in we got a daytime and a nighttime sun going on here. And we're just going to do a quick render like so. So render our image. And here we are. All right. So come on, hurry up. Remaining. Okay. I'll pause for a second. All right. So now that we've got that done, we're going to go over to the compositor. So compositing, we're going to say use nodes. And here what you've got, now you'll look here, you've got your rendering layers. You have two new options. You've got combined day and combined night. We can drag any one of these out like so. And you can look. So here is the nighttime and nighttime is going to look like that. And at any time, if I wanted to use the nighttime setup instead of the daytime, I could literally just drop it over here. And now day is now night. Now let's say we wanted to do, oh, it's my daytime and nighttime mixed up. Nighttime. Oh. No. Oh, I just have super bright. Okay. So there is daytime. There is nighttime. As you can see, you're obviously getting much different lighting. Let's get rid of these two. So whichever one you want to use, you can literally just drop it in there. So there's the daytime light rig. There is the nighttime light rig, or what we could do with this is do a combine. So I basically come down here and we'll do a mix like so. So in, so mix this lighting setup, this lighting setup like so, and let's add a new node in here, type value. All right. So this is the amount we are going to mix these two, drop that into there. And then this is our image and let's see the end result. So we got those two lighting setups of day and night. We want to mix between day and night. We can now do so. Now I'm going to, so there is full night and let me just use and oh, sorry, full day, full night. So you've got dusk and dawn and so on. So what you can use this for is basically you could set up multiple different lighting settings. So here you can see an obvious example of day and night. Uh, but you could also do like a, a front and back trip light setup or, or whatever. It allows you to actually have multiple different uh, render configs for lighting. Um, definitely a useful new feature, maybe a bit less so for game development for sure. Uh, but if you were using the cycles renderer, uh, you now have these light group setups, which is definitely a cool new feature for those folks. And then finally, we're coming back here to our preferences. Our last thing to talk about is EV Next. Now, as I mentioned earlier on, it is enabled as like a a side by side renderer uh, right here. And let's go see the details of what EV Next is all about. So this is uh, a, an EV rewrite. Now, EV is the real time rendering. Um, 
viewport. Uh, so basically you're getting almost cycles like quality, but you're getting at a real time frame rate. And that's what EV is all about. It's probably about two years old now. And they're actually doing a number of rewrites for these new features. So what we have in terms of new features coming in EV 2.0, is virtual shadow mapping, so increases shadow resolution while keeping a, and maximum sharpness with a relatively low memory footprint. Subsurface scattering that eliminates light linking between objects and supports per pixel radiuses. Highlight count supports, so lights are now efficiently culled and there's virtually no limit on the maximum number of lights you can put in your scene. Uh, panoramic camera by um, rendering up to six views, we can cover any panoramic projection by reprojecting the sample. Uh, motion blur now supports shutter curves, grease pencil object support. That one's probably the biggest one here if you're working in 2D. You could now use grease pencil with EV Next um, with yeah in ev so that is definitely a nice one if you are working with 2d stuff uh shading arbitrary number of bsdfs are now supported without major impact ray tracing and um SSS subsurface scattering uh, is no more restricted to one BSDF node. Uh, there is a new output which controls the thickness for translucency, refraction, or refraction and volume shaders, and all render passes um, are rendered at once. Do not need multiple geometry passes except for the crypto mat. Uh, you see here where the various different features are in their gating. Uh, so the might be done for initial release stuff is the things we're looking at. So uh, we've got these other things that are uh, needed but not in place yet and then you can see the level of progress based off this battery icon right here so not everything is in place yet but we're going to see the beginnings of a new ev rewrite uh, which is definitely uh, an exciting feature as well so if you're interested in checking this stuff out well if you watch this after tuesday uh, blender 3.2 here should show as beta uh, or you can just grab straight out daily builds. The things that are it, the only difference you're going to find between this build right now, if you download it today, because it was built today uh, and tomorrow is it's going to have a different splash screen. So if you want to check it out, uh, Blender 3.2 beta is effectively here. Uh, you tune in here on um, tomorrow on, on Tuesday and you will have the beta version available for download. Or, of course, you can build it yourself from code. Uh, if you want to get to this page, it is available at uh builder.blender.org uh so that is blender 3.2 beta uh some pretty nice stuff in there i like the new hair support uh the new light groups definitely going to be useful to people using the, the renderer side of things less so for game development and of course a brand new version of ev that is definitely something i think the majority of us will welcome so ladies and gentlemen that is blender 3.2 let me know what you think of course there is other stuff in there there's some grease pencil improvements and other features as well i will cover those when blender 3.2 final release is uh, and that should be about two months I think so let me know what you think of Blender 3.2 beta and I will talk to you all later goodbye